Hey there, how are you today? My name is Dana Damara and you've landed on Astrocast. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, those of you who are new to this forecast, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Those of you who are not new, thank you so much for your continued support. I'm uh, so grateful whenever I receive any kind of notes back and forth, I just kind of put this stuff out into the ether and I never know if anyone's paying attention. So it's nice to hear from you. Thank you so much. Um, all right, so those of you who have been uh, paying attention, I do weekly forecasts. So I'll do a forecast every Sunday or Monday, and I talk about the week ahead. Um, always do a full moon and a new moon. Uh, however, uh, I'm headed out of town for a little while, and I will be in Italy. And so what I decided to do is just put together um, an, a broad stroke of the astrology for June. And I picked out some of the important dates that I feel are important to note for all of us. Um, absolutely, we'll do a um, full moon and a new moon, but I won't be doing the weekly forecast for the next couple of weeks. Um, just as a, again, as a broad stroke overview, uh, this month, this month coming up June, uh, is a lot um, less chaotic, astrologically speaking. It's a little bit more calm, a little bit more docile, a little bit more um, clear. And uh, part of the reason is because in May, starting on May 10th, we had Mercury go into retrograde. And we were just coming out of, we're just now coming out of with this new moon Gemini uh, on the 30th, we're just coming on the other side of eclipse season. So with Mercury retrograde and eclipses, it's just a little bit, um, I don't know, unnerving, if you will, <laughs> a little like staticky, I think is a good word. Um, but remember, <clears throat> excuse me, Mercury retrograde will always bring up uh, what needs to be looked at. In fact, any retrograde will do that. It will bring up what needs to be reviewed individually and collectively. So if, if there's something that came up for you over the last, since May 10th till now, I would say, just take a look and ask yourself, hmm, I wonder what this is trying to teach me. Um, I know what's come up for me and I, uh, I feel like I got a B plus. So I, I always go for like a B plus or so, you know, <laughs> but just pay attention, see what came up for you. And then it's always nice to look to see where Mercury falls on your chart, because that will tell you what, um, when it goes into retrograde and when it comes out, um, what the specific, um, focus is. You have to look at the house that Mercury's in. Okay. So I want to share my screen with you. And so I'm going to do that right now. Uh, let's see. All right. So the first thing we want to pay attention to is Mercury going direct. Yay! Mercury goes direct on June 3rd. So uh, yay, yay, yay. Keep in mind that whenever a planet goes direct, it still has a little bit of a shadow stage to go through. Um, but as of June 3rd, I'm going to make sure I pulled up the right one. Yes, I did. Uh, as of June 3rd, um, you should start to see or a feel even a little bit more clarity, a little bit more truth comes in. Um, there is maybe a path revealed that hadn't been revealed. Maybe it's easier for you to say, okay, I'm ready to take these next steps. Um, it'll take until June 19th to get to its full former energy. So just be patient and try to focus on, you know, what's going on right now as opposed to, uh, you know, adding anything new. Like this is a really great time to review, reflect, um, stay focused, really think about what it is that you desire uh, and, and pay attention. You know, we just had that uh, new moon Gemini and it's, it's bringing in a whole batch of new energy after eclipse season. So we're out of the eclipse portal and oh my God, being out of the eclipse portal is, <laughs> a blessing. Uh, so just be patient while all of this unfolds. Now on the, the next thing that we have happening is on June 4th, and this is Saturn going into retrograde. So I'm going to share my screen with you. All right. Okay. 
to make sure I have the right one, June 4th. Okay, so June 4th, Saturn goes into retrograde. Um, Saturn goes into retrograde um, until October 22nd or 23rd of this year. And it is the last time, I believe it goes into retrograde, uh, I don't know, in, in our lifetime. Uh, let me see here. Uh, well, you know, I don't want to quote it, but I know that it doesn't go into retrograde in Aquarius for a very, very long time. We've had a little bit of a rough road here, haven't we, since 2020. Saturn was retrograde in Capricorn in 2020, um, in January 2020, and then uh, retrograde again now in Aquarius. So, you know, Saturn is is the timekeeper, the Lord Kronos, you know, the Lord of Karma. Saturn is the one that kind of keeps you straight, uh, keeps you on the straight and narrow. Saturn is about restrictions. It's about rules. It's about um, functionality. It's about, you know, doing things in a certain way uh, in order to make things happen. And so when Saturn goes into retrograde, this, it, it's a... It's a subtle energy, I have to be honest. It's a subtle energy. And this one is really asking you to um, take a look at the past and, you know, and I would say look back to like 2020 when Saturn was in uh, Capricorn, right? And maybe just since then, what are some of the lessons that you've been afforded? What are some of the things that you've, um, been able to um, learn and grow with and evolve with. It's, it's you know, Saturn's going to check up on you. Saturn's going to say, like, are you paying attention? Are you, uh, what, what are you doing when no one's looking? <laughs> are you checking off your list? Are you following your dreams? Are you being distracted? And Saturn will put you in your place. So from uh, June 4th until... Um, October 22nd, 23rd, we'll have a chance to reflect, which is always uh, nice. Uh, and I mean that, uh, <laughs> I mean that wholeheartedly. It really is a, a nice chance to reflect and just really, you know, um, feeling into our sense of accomplishment because individually and collectively we've been through so much and it really is a, a lifetime opportunity to be able to clear karma, to be able to um, maybe change generational patterns to change the way you do things. And I'm not talking about um, working from home or not working from home. I'm talking about how you live your life, right? Like we are offered all this time to really ask ourselves, am I, am I fulfilled? Am I happy doing what I'm doing? Or uh, do I need to change? Am I happy responding the way I'm responding? You know, that was a big one for me from 2020 to now, really asking myself, like, wow, what what was I doing? I was going so fast. I was always in such a flurry. Um, and it happens, you know, but we had a chance to reflect. And I think when we reflect like that and we really say, OK, I feel like these are some of my lessons. Saturn always has a gift. Saturn will give a gift and say, nice job, you know, so just be open to uh, looking at yourself in the mirror and, and looking at yourself in the mirror with compassion and grace and just really aligning your heart with like um, the remembrance that you're, that you're this sweet soul inside this earth suit because <laughs> we all are <laughs> and we're just doing the best we can. Um, okay, next thing I wanna talk about is on June 11th, Venus will conjunct Uranus. Uh, so let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. June 11th, June 11th, Venus conjunct Uranus. Okay, so Venus is, and I'll just show you where it is. Uh, where's my sweet Venus? Where's Venus? There's Venus right there. Venus is right here, sitting right next to Uranus. Uh, there's Mercury. <laughs> there's the North Node. Uh, so lots going on in Taurus, four planets in Taurus. That's a stellium. Uh, we've also got three planets in Aries. So uh, still good old Chiron and uh, Jupiter. Jupiter's going to be in Aries. This is just over here, you guys, uh, for another 12 to 18 months. Mars is there for a bit of time. Chiron is there till 2025 or 2026. So lots of healing lessons in Aries. But let's go back to Taurus. Okay, so Venus, uh, Venus is, um, 
Venus is all about abundance and value and what we value and what we love and how we beautify our life and uh, the belief in love and grace. And uh, Uranus is about um, liberation and change and growth and uh, the higher mind in the inspired mind, inspired action, you know, so, uh, and change, sometimes unexpected change. So when Venus and, and Uranus, and by the way, Venus loves uh, Taurus, Venus loves being in Taurus, and Uranus has been here for a little bit, but when Venus and Uranus get together, um, they allow us to feel, it, this energy allows us to feel um, open to expressing love and to expressing our creativity um, it, it offers us an opportunity to open the heart and to really break free from some of the, um, maybe some of the protection that we've placed on our heart, uh, for whatever reason over the last uh, week, month, uh, year or lifetime. And so this is really, um, an, an, a planetary shift in how we break down our barriers around our heart which is just so perfect. Honestly, I didn't, I didn't know that this was happening. And I, I called out the theme of the retreat is um, back to love, return to love. And then when I saw this, I was like, well, of course, you know, so it's really coming back to a greater love for self, a greater love for our partners or our families or this world, you know, it's also extra um, helpful for our creativity. So giving ourselves um, time to be creative and be a little spontaneous to meet new people to, it's just really about um, opening up the heart and, and allowing ourselves to feel that sense of love again. You know, I think, um, I think being in uh, isolation for so long and, you know, watching the world just go through these epic, very uncomfortable shifts you know, I don't know about you, but very uncomfortable shifts on the planet right now. Um, um, being distracted by social media. I think it's very easy to tune out. I think it's very easy to crouch over the heart physically and look down at our phones. Um, I think it's, it's very easy to uh, distract and to ghost, you know, what we don't want to pay attention to. Uh, but I think that time is, um, I don't want to say should, but I'm going to say should, should be over because um, we really were here to connect. Like this lifetime is here. We incarnated in this body to connect with each other, period. <laughs> That's like the only reason we're here is to connect and to serve each other. And, and we get so distracted, you know, we're just like, we, and we all do. I get distracted. You get distracted. We all get distracted with our humanness. So with Venus and Uranus in Taurus, it's just going to feel like a breath of fresh air. It's going to feel um, really, really sweet. So, okay. So I want to share with you the next, um, the next thing I want you to pay attention to for this month. And that is the Sagittarius full moon. And it's a super moon, which means that the moon is closer to the earth than normal, which I don't know, you know, I, I don't have, um, I don't have an, a measurement tool to see how far the moon is. I could look it up. I'm sure I could figure it out. Um, but when the moon is super, when it's a super full moon, it's super close and it, it's bigger. Like you can see it a little bit bigger. It's like sometimes when we have super moons, I feel like you know, when we were younger, I don't know if you ever had books where the moon is like hanging from a string. Like, that's what I feel like is happening. And I just stare at it sometimes like, how are you there? I don't understand. <laughs> so um, let me share my screen <laughs> with you. And I'm going to do my best uh, to um, record a full moon. I, I'm going to try. I, I'm not committing, but I'm going to try because I feel like the full moons are really fun. And uh, as long as it doesn't impede with my trip, um, I will get on my Zoom for uh, however long and I'll just uh, post a little uh, full moon. So, so this is the Sagittarius super full moon. Um, I, didn't, I didn't say this earlier about the full moon, but whenever 
super moons happen since they're closer to the earth we can actually feel their effects a little bit more and i was having a discussion with my daughter the other day about how different the waves look when um we live in san diego and how different the waves look when we have a, a new moon and a full moon and when we do have super moons they are the waves are bigger like you can see it and sometimes depending upon the placement there's like an erratic, um, there's an erratic pattern. There isn't like, sometimes it's a very smooth pattern. They come in sets of three or four. It's very calm. But whenever we have this super full moon, I swear to you, it's like they come in from all different directions. It seems like, so we may feel this a little bit more. Remember we are, yes, we are a light. We are a light being filled with magic. We are a star. And in this uh, human form, we are 80% water. So you're going to feel a full moon. You may not notice it. Don't go out looking for it, but it's a true thing. And, and this full moon really has a, um, a gentle tone to it. I'm not going to go through all the aspects, uh, but even just looking right now, like this is just barely looking. Mercury is about to go into Gemini. North node is still in Taurus. Venus and Uranus are still within two degrees of each other. So we're talking about love. Um, Chiron is sitting with Aries, which tells me, and that's just up here, and not with Aries, with Mars and Aries, which tells me that this energy to healing is like on the path, initiation to healing. Here we go, initiation to healing. Um, Jupiter is still there, so lots of expansion. Um, Neptune's still sitting in Pisces, Saturn retrograde, still in Aquarius, looking at the lessons. Um, Pluto's still in Capricorn. Ha, ah, when is Pluto going to get to Aquarius? Ha. Ah. And then, of course, the moon in Sagittarius and the sun in Gemini. We have everything above board. So we have everything above the horizon uh, at the time of this full moon, uh, at least in San Diego. And so, you know, this is a it's a it's a beautiful full moon to um, remember to find joy, to remember to um you know, think about or integrate, reflect on all the transformative energy we have been feeling over the last several months. And this full moon is really going to help us let go of any final, final bits of attachment. I call them tendrils, any final tendrils that we may be holding on to, to old patterns or old beliefs or people or um, ideas that we have about ourselves and our life. And it also you know, since it's a super moon and it's bigger, you know, it will illuminate um, a little bit more. It's just going to illuminate a little bit more for you um, and for me. So uh, I'll be excited to be um, watching that full moon and I will do my very, very best to get a recording to you. Um, okay. And so now the next thing I want to talk about is the solstice. This is on June 21st. This is solstice uh, when, the move, when the sun moves into the sign of cancer. So the solstice is um, a point in time. It's what I call a turn of the wheel. It's a turn of seasons, right? And so we're turning, we're entering into a new season. I used to do for years, I did 108 sun salutations every year for the solstice and the equinox. And it was just so powerful. Um, it's, it's a time to move energy. We're moving into summer if we're in the Northern hemisphere, right? So we're moving into a new energy. We're moving into a new um, vibration, if you will, on the planet. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna share my screen. All right. Okay, so here's the solstice. I should also say, I just want to check my dates. Hang on here. I have all these notes in front of me. Okay. No, that's on the 28th. Okay. So um, on the 21st, which is just a week after the super full moon, um, you know, it's a power day. It's, it's a power day of the year. It's a, you know, we're moving into the sign of cancer. We're moving into the summer. We're moving into the longest day of the year in the Northern hemisphere and, and in the start of winter in the uh, Southern hemisphere. So it's the shortest day of the year. So it's, it's a, it, it's, it, remember that no matter where you are in the world, the solstice is a time to celebrate the light and to remember that 
amidst all the darkness in your life or on this planet, we will always return to light. Um, solstice energies are said to um, thin the veil. So I notice when I, around the solstice, if I'm really focused, um, you know, lucid dreams are more available, um, you know, where you wake up and you're like, was that a dream or was that real? Um, being able to hear and feel whatever clear you are, uh, hear and feel um, different types of energies, different types of intuitive hits, right? So just pay attention to um, how you're feeling during this time, because uh, the energy grid, the grid, because there's a grid for the planet, the energy grid for the planet moves into perfect harmony. It's between dark and light, right? And so it allows us to tap into this energy um, and to into the healing energy too, with which with much more ease, with much more grace. That's why uh, 108 sun salutations was so powerful because if we were holding on to anything, we definitely would get rid of it. Um, so the solstice is a really, uh, really powerful time uh, every year. And again, that's June uh, 21st, no matter where you are in the world, it just depends upon um, if you're moving into dark or light, right? Um, and then the next big event will be uh, the Cancer New Moon on June 28th. Now, those of you who live in San Diego, I will be back. Uh, God willing, I will be back um, for this new moon. Super excited uh, to, to venture out into the world, but also love, love, love coming home. Uh, so the Cancer New Moon's on the 28th. Let me go ahead and share my screen with you here. All right. So look at how different this one looks. <laughs> the solstice, all the planets were you know, quote unquote, above the horizon. And uh, here all the planets are below the horizon. So this Cancer New Moon takes place uh, on June 28th at, um, what time do I have here? Uh, 7.52 PM, so in the evening. Uh, so, and you can see that you look here, it's like the sun and the moon are right there at seven degrees Cancer, uh, just before the sun sets here in San Diego, California. Uh, nothing in those upper quadrants, uh, but everything down below. Um, here's what I will say. I don't talk a lot about Black Moon Lilith, okay? Um, but I always look to see where Lilith is in people's charts, and I always look to see how Black Moon Lilith is, um, or how Lilith is uh, affecting my chart every now and again, but the Cancer New Moon, it falls close to uh, Black Moon Lilith, and this activates both the dark and the light feminine energies. So whichever energy needs to be challenged within you, right? Like if you're needing to be more feminine, um, uh, you know, which is like allowing, slowing down, surrendering, that kind of thing, uh, the, you will receive lessons that will show you that if you need to step up and be assertive and, and, you know, you're kind of not, you feel like maybe you're not ready, uh, the energies will kind of, um, assure you into the next thing. And so as this new moon comes right after the solstice, like, you know, a week after the solstice. Uh, so we have the, we have the, Sagittarius super full moon on the 14th. And then we have the solstice exactly one week later. And then we have the cancer new moon exactly one week later. Uh, I didn't even get to the best part yet. This is an amazing time for manifestation. Like uh, amazing. So new moons are a great, 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 great time to uh, sit down and set intentions and create rituals. But this one in particular is really super potent. Um, I will say the new moon Gemini that we just experienced, uh, we're, we're still in it as I'm recording this actually, is really powerful as well. It's because we've been spat out after the solar or after the uh, eclipse season. So just know that these the, that new moon in Gemini and this one in Cancer is like, stay close to your heart and close to your intentions. Super powerful. 
um, and this new moon. Now, uh, there is something else that happens on this day. Always a good time. Neptune goes into retrograde. So now at this point in time on the 28th, we're going to have Pluto, Saturn, and Neptune all in retrograde at the same time. Uh, Neptune retrogrades every year. So it's part of its natural course of action. Uh, as Neptune goes retrograde, we might experience like something new coming to the surface, right? Neptune is dark. It's the depths. Um, it's, it's the underbelly of your thoughts, your unconscious thoughts. So something that was maybe in the shadows of your life um, is starting to want to come to the surface. Um, we also might have like new realizations or new um, perceptions around things that just shed light on, um, you know, what's next. So June is a really, really, um, it's a beautiful time for um, manifesting. It's a beautiful time for um, preparing for the summer. Uh, so whatever you decide to do with this energy, just make sure you go back to the heart, back to the heart, back to the heart, you know, make sure that you're continually um, dropping into intuition. You're setting these rituals for yourself that are so um, nourishing and supportive and loving, right? Um, so allow yourself space to slow down. Uh, you know, in, in uh, San Diego, we have like April showers and then we have May gray and then we have June gloom. And some people complain and I am like, Oh, I love this because I can feel that sense of like mini cocooning until the end of June. And then it's like, ah, it's summer's here. Tourists are here. Oh, I don't want to work today. I want to go out to the beach. Ah, I'm going to go surfing. Ah, I'm going to go here. You know, <laughs> there's like that frenetic mm, hum. <laughs> Maybe that's just me, but uh that's kind of how it feels with these energies. It's like, just stay internal a little bit. Just kind of keep nourishing the heart, let things unfold, uh, enjoy, uh, be grateful, enjoy company, friends, family, whatever. And then, you know, July is going to be here and you're going to be invited to a million backyard barbecues for the next five months, right? Um, okay, so I want to say thank you so much. Again, I absolutely love doing these every week. And I wish I could commit, but I have learned in the last like two years, maybe just the last year, uh, to not to just stop over committing, right? So I want to make sure I can deliver. So here's my month. And if I uh, get to the full moon, I absolutely will do it. And if I don't, uh, but you, ha you have something to absolutely work with here. Um, so I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your day. If you want more information uh, about how to read your chart, how to line up your chart, what's a new moon, what's a full moon, what's a moon phase, all this kind of really fun uh, astrological stuff, go to myastrocast.com myastrocast.com and uh, you just put in your little email and then you'll get the little email sent to you every couple of days that'll tell you all about uh, different ways that you can really learn some of this stuff on your own too. I'm not saying it's professional education. I'm just saying it kind of makes sense, brings everything together. Uh, so thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. Have such a gorgeous, gorgeous rest of your day. Mwah. Namaste. Thank you.